What's going on guys? Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs. Recently I tested a micro size 500 watt sundown amplifier and it got pretty good feedback from the test. So I was looking on Amazon. Scar Audio has a 500 watt amp that's much cheaper than the sundown. So I decided to pick one of those up and we're going to try that out today. So let's see how it does. All right, let's take a closer look at the SCAR SKM5001D. Caution, do not mount amplifier to subwoofer enclosure. It's always a good idea to not do that. Let's take the amplifier out of the box and see what's included. Here you can see each of the different components. We have a base knob, which has a power LED and also has a telephone style connection on the rear. Very nice. There's the cable. There's a high level input and here is the manual. Now with the manual, let's take a closer look at the specs. Rated power 238 at four ohms, 380 at two ohms and 500 at one ohm. Has a low pass filter, also adjustable subsonic filter at 24 dB, which is nice and a four way protection circuit. Here is the exterior of the amp. You can see the high level input, low level inputs, gain, variable subsonic, variable low pass filter and the remote for the base knob. On the other side, we have ground, remote, 12 volt, two LEDs, one for power, one for protect, and the speaker terminals. Everything is eight gauge and uses the same size hex key. Very nice. Let's look at the dimensions. For the length, 7.9 inches, width, 4.6 inches. You can see the metric equivalents as well. And the depth is around 1.7 inches or 43 millimeters. Here's a comparison to the Sundown SAM500D, which I'd call a mini or I'm sorry, a micro amp. We call the SCAR kind of a mini amp, not quite as small. And let's take a look at the guts. Oh, uh, no, we're going to show you that later. Just a teaser here. But let's do get the amp hooked up so that we can fire it up with the dyno here. Get the RCA's base knob connected. And we'll get the power, ground, turn on, and speaker leads connected and get it fired up. All right, now we'll get the old amp dyno fired up, do some RMS power output test. Again, these are RMS tests. These are not max power. These are resistive loads. Let's see what we get first. Start off at four ohms. The amp is rated 238 watts at 14.4. First test is certified, takes us up to 1% total harmonic distortion. And there you go, 231 at 14.38. So right at the rated power. Now let's try uncertify, which takes us up to the clipping point of the amp, which is the best test, in my opinion, for the subwoofer amps. And we got 239, so right at the rated power at 14.32. Dynamic power sends a pulse tone into the amp, 40 hertz for this test. You can see 241 watts at 14.42 volts. Now at the certified test, we got an efficiency of 76.1%. Next up, we'll try two ohms. Amp is rated 380 watts at 14.4. Do the test in the same order. Certified first, takes us up to 1% THD. There we go, within five watts of the rated 375, but we're a little bit under 14.25, or a little bit under 14.4. So this amp definitely does its rated power. Uncertified test. And we get the rated power plus more. You can see over 400 watts, 404, 14.13. Dynamic, 40 hertz, pulse track. Easily over 400 watts, 411 watts at 14.26. Efficiency at two ohms, we got 70, almost 71%. Now the one ohm test is where it's rated to do 500 watts at 14.4 volts. Certified test first. There we go, got the numbers easily, 522 at 14.1 volts. Uncertified, yep, look at that. 588, 13.91, very nice. 
Dynamic power test, again, 40 hertz pulse tone into the amp. Nice dynamic power, has over 622 watts. Oop, jumped up, 634, 14.21. Let's check out that efficiency for the certified test, 60.5%, which is not great for an amp this small. All right, for this next segment, I have a special treat for you. We're gonna take a look at the amp guts, but we're gonna do something a little different. I actually enlisted an expert Mr. Sam Vennard from BearVids is going to talk about what's going on here. You can check Sam out at youtube.com slash BearVids. He has a lot of tests, a lot of videos where he shows tests, he shows oscilloscopes, he tells you how to repair amps, all kind of good stuff. Big shout out to Sam, youtube.com slash BearVids for doing this for me. Let's see what Sam has to say about this amp. All right, let's dive deeper into this thing. Car amps are split into two halves, power supply and output section. Now, 99% of car amps use the same power supply design scaled up or down to suit power handling because it's, it's a cheap and effective design, so there isn't really much to talk about here. Standard TL494 chip running IRF3205 fetch, discreetly driven in push-pull across the center tap of a transformer, then rectified into positive and negative supply rails for the output section. It's nice to see 3205 FETs being used here as opposed to many of the weaker FETs, higher resistance FETs found in many amps like this. Since this is a lower power amp, it's a shame we don't see a power filter inductor. As seen in the likes of the JBL GTO 7001, this prevents noise from the switching power supply finding its way into other 12 volt devices and amps and stuff in the vehicle. You won't see this on large amplifiers due to the resistance that it adds. The output section here, we're going to throw into category generic class D7 as per Perry Babin's amplifier repair guide, if you've ever seen that. This exact output circuit dates way back to at least the early 2000s and has been used in budget line amps such as Hyphonics, Lanzar Vibe, Autotech, and is based on an early discrete class D self oscillating architecture. There's actually a design flaw in these driver boards caused by an oversight when remodeling for surface mount components in that a couple of transistors here run extremely hot and cause premature failure of the amp. This could have been corrected by simply using beefier transistors here or by applying a heatsink to the whole thing, which is something that you should definitely consider if you plan on running these for a couple of years or more, especially in hot climates. So as you may have already guessed, SCAR does not design their own bespoke amplifier circuits and instead just copy pastes ancient layouts and put into a small but well assembled form factor. Yeah, despite the old cheap design, it does have a fairly decent build quality with inductor and transformer seated better than many that I've seen. Uh, although the driver board could do with some epoxy along the base, if you catch the right harmonic that's going to vibrate back and forth and eventually snap the legs, um, especially if it's mounted to a box. Overall, if you can pick this up cheap, it'll do you well for some daily basing, making the power that it claims uh, in a convenient form factor. It could be improved by using newer, lower resistance FETs, like seriously, we don't still need to be using 640Ns, uh, and less of them, meaning less heat generated and an even small form factor would be possible, and an integrated drive circuit chip rather than this flawed discrete one on the driver board. A great example of a similarly priced amp that has all of these benefits and does a little bit more power is a Pioneer GMD8701. Big thanks to Sam for that well-rounded explanation of this amplifier. Wow, pretty good. Let's give a thumbs up for Sam. Yeah, boy! All right, what's the fun in doing a subwoofer amp test without showing it with subwoofers? Let's we'll see what it does. All right, let's try the silicon base. Three kinds of bass. Let's hear them.
All right, so I had a lot of people ask me before about giving the temperature of the amp and the sundown I ran before, it didn't really warm up all that much. But I've run this scar quite a bit longer after the dyno with music. So let's check it and see what the temp is. And again, this is Fahrenheit for you around other guys around the world. This is not Celsius. So it looks like 96 or so is the hottest we've got. Now it's kind of a cold day out here. It's about 48 degrees Fahrenheit here in the lab. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice and warm, but it's not hot. And again, I ran all the dyno tests and then ran it hard on the subwoofer playing a lot of bass heavy music. And still, it's very comfortable to the touch right now. In fact, it's nicely warming my hand up, but not burning it in any way. So, very good. All right, here's the results of the amp dyno test. You can see the amp did its rated power pretty much at every load or very close to it with a little bit less voltage. So that's good. Let's see what Big D has to say about that. All right, guys, there you have the test of the SCAR Audio SKM5001D, 501D, whatever, 5001D. Amp performed well. It's a little bit bigger than the Sundown. I call this a mini amp, not a micro amp. But power-wise, it did its numbers. I'm pretty sure SCAR Audio uses their amp dyno to test and get all their numbers because it was right about exactly the same as what they rated the amp at. So it did well across the board. It sounded great with music. It didn't get too hot in my test. And uh, for the money, wow, it's incredible. It's a great value. Now you're not getting the marine coating that you get with the Sundown or the NVX. Check the video description below. I'll have both of those listed so you can check those out as well. See which one works better for you. Big shout out again to Sam at BearVids for helping me out with this video with going through the amp and telling you guys all the stuff that I kind of skip around about the guts. He knows his amps. And thanks always to the Patreon supporters for supporting me. Check me out, patreon.com slash oldschoolstereo. As always, thanks again. Until next time, you know where Big D is. I'm out of here. SCAR Mini Amp. We're going to try 0.8 certified up to 1% THD. 40 hertz is not rated to handle anything under 1 ohm. But you know how we do it. We test it for you guys. So let's see what we do here. Here we go. All right, almost 600 watts, 592 at 14.6. All right, we're gonna try 0.67 ohms resistive, which is what the dyno does. At 40 hertz, the SCAR amp is rated down to one ohm only, so this is not a valid test for this amp. It's just basically a torture test to see if it can handle lower ohm loads, just in case you need to do that. So let's try it out. 40 hertz, 0.67 ohms. Does it work? Does it go into smoke? Let's find out. All right, 583 at 14.33. So it handled the load. All right, so this test makes a lot of people mad. Half an ohm dynamic. This means nothing, right? So be it. We still want to see what the amp does. Half an ohm resistive load, which is on speakers, probably like 0.2 ohms and something that most people would never wire an amp like this down to. But we're going to try it anyway. Torture test for you guys. Let's see what it does. Does it shut off? Does it blow up? Does it do the numbers? Let's see what we get. Eight sixteen at fourteen point two two did not shut off. Did not go into protect. I'll show you right here. Amp is still on. Blue light still on. Not blue light special, but yeah, cool. What's going on, guys? Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs. We did the Sundown Micro Amp before, and it got some pretty good feedback. So I went on Amazon and noticed Scar Audio. Beautiful, right? Trying to record a segment and your phone rings. Hope it wasn't somebody important because you guys are more important.